Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the 0.303 inch Browning gun and the gun's installation within the Spitfire 5A variant, which was fitted with eight Browning machine guns. I shall give you extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual and show you my relevant reworked colour AP diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. The 0.303 inch Browning is a light machine gun that has a rate of fire of 1,150 rounds per minute and is automatic in action in the sense that so long as the pilot's firing control is operated, the gun should continue to fire until all the available ammunition is expended. In the case of the Spitfire Mark 5A and B, ammunition is fed to the gun by belt via a chute that's linked in turn to ammunition boxes, each containing 350 rounds. Power for feeding is provided by the gun itself. Firing of the gun is effected through two units, the rear sear release and the fire and safe, both of which must be operated before the gun can fire. Firing the gun is effected by remote control through the pneumatic system. Both the rear sear release and the fire and safe unit are operated almost simultaneously by the pilot's firing button. This method of control is self-sufficient, self-contained and exclusive. The Browning gun depends for its action on the recoil of internal moving parts assisted as the bullet leaves the barrel by gas pressure. After the first shot, the recoil of these parts ejects the empty case and the return reloads the gun and also supplies the power to draw the ammunition belt into position for feeding, which may be from the right or the left of the gun. The belt is guided to the gun by a chute, and after firing, the empty cases and separate links are discharged from the gun through openings on the underside of the Spitfire's main plane, as shown here. Cooling of the Browning is entirely by airflow over the barrel muzzle attachment, which are the only parts that need cooling, but heating can be provided to prevent freezing of the working parts. The Spitfire 5A carried eight Browning machine guns, and the 5B carried four guns. We shall cover more on the gun installations for the Spitfire 5B and C in a later video. The ammunition links that couple the cartridges together to form the ammunition belt are made of sheet spring steel. Each link consists of three rings of unequal size in the same plane. Two rings are on the one side and one ring on the other side of the link. The former rings are designed to fit tightly the neck and body respectively of the cartridge case. The latter ring is of larger diameter and fits loosely around the cartridge when this is in position. When the ammunition belt is assembled, the single ring is positioned between the two rings of the next link, and the cartridge case, passing through the three rings, forms the axis pin of the two links, the whole constituting a hinge. Exact location is assured by a flange on the smallest ring pressing against the shoulder of the cartridge neck. When a cartridge is correctly assembled and positioned in a link, the distance from the bullet edge of the smallest ring to the base of the cartridge case must be between 2.072 and 2.052 inches, the distance being assured by the setting of the filling machine. The force required to pull the cartridge out of the link is between 8 pound and 16 pound when correctly assembled. The complete belt is made up of loosely linked rounds, the flexibility of the belt being aided by tapering the sides of the largest ring. When fed to the gun, the belts become disintegrated as rounds are withdrawn and the links are thrown out of the gun to fall through the openings on the underside of the Spitfire's main plane. 
The links are finished with a protective coating and when issued are free from oil and ready for use. When belts are issued, factory filled in boxes, the following precautions must be observed. If the box appears to have been broken in transit, the belts therein should not be directly loaded into the Spitfire's ammunition box, but should first be passed through a belt positioning machine. The Jackson belt positioning machine consists of a base plate which is secured to the armourer's bench by three wood screws. Here is a view of the Browning Link aligning tool used by armourers. And here is the gun alignment tool. This instrument is used for both the Browning .303 inch gun and the Vickers gas operated gun. The viewfinder, part A, would be fitted to the appropriate part, in this case part B. And the tapered end would be inserted into the forward end of the gun barrel. The armourer could then look through the viewfinder to ascertain the correct alignment for the gun and adjust as required. This instrument was made by Ray of London, a manufacturer of quality binoculars and cameras during the 1920s and 30s. The eight Browning guns in the Spitfire 5A are mounted in the main planes after the main spar and fire through tunnels in the leading edge. The ammunition boxes, each contain 350 rounds, are mounted in pairs between the guns, so that in each plane two guns are fed from the right hand side and two from the left hand side. The guns and boxes are easily accessible through removable panels on the underside of the plane. There is also a detachable panel on the top surface as each gun position. The guns are operated by compressed air. All the gun mountings are similar except that guns number 1 and 3 are approximately 6 inches behind guns 2 and 4, numbered from inboard outwards. The front fork is mounted directly onto the main spar and the rear fork is mounted on a cross shaft between the ribs. The front fork has a vertical pivot to allow a lateral adjustment of the gun and the cross shaft of the rear fork is mounted on eccentric bearings to provide vertical adjustment. For lateral adjustment, the rear fork is moved along the cross shaft by means of shoulder nuts which screw up against the fork, locking being provided by a lock nut on one side of the fork. For vertical adjustment, the cross shaft is rotated on the eccentric bearings by means of a lever attached to the shaft, the lever being secured in position by a swivel bolt engaging in one of several notches on a quadrant plate mounted on the rib. Both the front and rear gun attachment bolts have swinging tommy bars fitted to them in order that they can be screwed into place without the use of spanners. When mounting a gun, the barrel should be offered into the aft end of the gun tunnel tube through the spar and leading edge. When the gun is mounted, a gas tight joint should be made by the asbestos ring and bobbin fitted to the gun at the breech end of the barrel and by the clip round the aft end of the gun tunnel. Care must be taken that this is a good joint. The clip should be slackened off when removing the gun. The ammunition boxes are mounted laterally between the guns and are supported on three spring-loaded pins at the bottom. Two of these pins are attached to the box at the feed neck end with corresponding fittings on adjacent ribs. And the third is fixed to the rib at the other end, the female fitting for this pin being on the box. When installing a loaded box into the main plane, the pins on the box should be depressed into the catch body and held there in the notches. The box should then be offered up till the pins are in line with their holes. A position stop is provided, whereupon the pins should be released from their notches by the fingers. The box can then be pivoted on these pins to engage with the third spring-loaded pin. 
All the pins should then be turned into their locking slots. When the guns are not fitted, the forward ends of the blast tubes must be covered with a double thickness of fabric doped over the leading edge of the plane. The aeroplane must not be flown without either the guns or this covering. To keep the guns warm enough for instant operation at high altitudes, ducts are installed to carry warm air from behind the radiator to the gun positions. These ducts are of composite material, one passing from the radiator to rib 8 in the starboard plane and the other passing from the radiator across the fuselage and beneath the pilot's seat to rib 8 in the port plane. At rib 8 in each plane, a baffle is fitted to blank off the inboard portion of the plane from the outboard portion. The air duct protruding through this baffle and directing the flow of air outboard to the guns. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing and also ring the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.